Hello, everybody. Welcome to my new series, 10 Questions. Today, I have the beautiful Lexi Gray. And if you guys don't know anything about this new series, it's basically like kind of a mini interview. And I ask my guests more insightful questions about themselves and, you know, who they are as a person. Like we all know who these people are as performers. We see them on the various platforms. But like, who are these people like? as human beings, you know, that's something that is to me more intriguing than, you know, how many things can go on their butt. So uh, <laughs> that's what we're doing here today with Lexi. So before we start, Lexi, why don't you give us like a little intro and um, tell us about yourself. I have been in the industry for four years now. Um, I knew I wanted to do that forever. Like it was like the only career option like I had in my brain and I like really went for it um I'm from Brooklyn New York I just moved to LA a little over a year ago but I'm moving back um next week um I have a little doggy named Chloe hi Chloe I know I I just saw her her ears and she looked like a little fox yeah she looks like, like a fox everyone always uh says that to me and someone asked me like seriously like is that a fox I was like no it's a I know we're in LA but it's a it's a dog <laughs> <laughs> well she's my bestie she comes with me everywhere um and yeah that's that's like so, the part of it before we get into the questions that I have prepared I just want to ask a little bit more about you because you said something interesting you said this is something that I knew I always wanted to do was like my only career choice in mind. Can you expand on that a little bit? When did you know that you wanted to work in the adult industry and, and why? Um, well, honestly, I was still in high school at the time that I decided that um, I did want to be in the industry. Um, you know, I've seen videos. Obviously, we all have access to the Internet. Um, and I was just like, like, this is like a job, like someone has to do this. Like someone's there making these videos. I was like, I want to, I want to fucking do that. And yeah. I just like, I just thought it'd be like a good fit. And mm -hmm. it just like seemed so fun. And like, it's something I'm so passionate about. And I'm so happy I did take that chance and like really go for it um I'm really proud of myself for doing it too and like actually like making something out of it which is pretty cool because I know the standard lifetime of a performer's career is not super long mm -hmm. so, yeah I think I did pretty all right so far I mean I'm not done yet by any means but it's been a good start for you yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so before we go to our questions, I just want to thank Larry Walker 98 for your incredibly generous super chat. Not expecting that. Thank you, Larry. Very appreciative. Um, all of, you know, all the support you guys can give is uh, always like very grateful for it. A very expensive new studio, as you can see from this fabulous wallpaper behind me. You would, can't imagine how much it costs. Um, but thank you so much, Larry. Okay, Lexi. So let's start with um, with a question that maybe pertains to what we just talked about. What is your greatest accomplishment in life? Honestly, probably like taking the chance on myself and like making this job like happen for me. I mean, like I moved fully across the country like by myself, which is like not everyone does that it was like pretty like difficult but I really like when I want something like I will get it because like I have to and like I will make it happen for myself and I really just went in like balls deep I was like okay like this is what I want to do I have goals I'm gonna make them happen um and I mean, it took me a while to like, I was actually able to move, but like I made it happen. I feel like just the fact that you just said I went into a balls deep makes me feel like maybe you were destined for this industry. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever used that in, as a description of, you know, 
the focus and ambition that they used towards <laughs> achieving their goal, but I can totally relate. <laughs> and they're balls deep. Balls deep is deep. I mean, it depends on, you know, who you are, but you know, balls deep is, it's as deep as you're going to get it as a man. So I think uh, we, <laughs> we can at least like respect that that's a very, that's very deep. Yes. <clears throat> and, uh, but you did say that you're moving back to New York. Is that, is that right? Yeah, I'm moving back on Tuesday. I'm just like having some problems with my apartment and I'm gonna take care of some stuff like in terms of like health and so I'm gonna have like a few months of like doing that and then I'll be back but in the meantime I'll be doing you know the nice little like two week trip back and forth mm -hmm. that whole thing so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere I just won't right be right well, I mean, and in today's industry, there's a lot of stuff you can do independently from your own home. So at least you you have that freedom. Yeah, absolutely. Only yeah. fans and many vids and all yeah. that stuff. Platforms have definitely made a difference. Oh, yeah. All right. So my next question is, um, what is the biggest mistake you've made in your life and what did you learn from it? Oof. <laughs> I keep getting in a cycle where like I will do things like well like I won't do things that I want because of the man that I am involved with mm -hmm. like when I initially wanted to move to California I stayed in Brooklyn because the guy I was like kind of with was like telling me that he wanted me to stay and I was like really I was like weighing it out like heavily and I ended up staying and I regretted it every single day I was I was miserable I was like I wish I left I wish I left I wish I left I was like I can never do this again like I can't like if I want something like I need to go do it otherwise like I will end up upset and resentful and miserable and like who wants to live like that like I don't want to like look back and be like oh, I wish I did this, this, and this. Meanwhile, I could have just done it. Yeah. That's such a hard lesson for all of us to learn, you know, to put ourselves before other people, um, especially somebody that you're romantically involved with. And I think that all of us have to have those relationships where we do put the other person before ourselves, realize it was a mistake and, and learn from that and move on, right? Because I mean, I've done that too, I think every woman, every man can say that they've also done that. So, you know, it's all about like figuring out what's important to us and establishing those boundaries. And I feel like that's just like a lifelong lesson. Oh, it's so hard. I mean, like, yeah. even, like after that, I'm like, I still like have found myself doing the same type of thing. I'm like, stop, stop that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what? I, I do firmly believe that the universe continues to put the same problem in front of you over and over again until you figure out how to conquer that issue. So the universe is probably going to continue to put people in your life who want you to put them before yourself until like you get to a place where you're like, no, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. And you're not going to change that for me. And then the right person will come into your life. That's what I believe. You're probably right, to be honest. And I keep just like ignoring it. Like, no, I'll just keep doing the same stupid shit over and over and over again. And then like one day it'll be bad enough where it's like, okay, like I, this is like, it's done. Like I can't do this ever again. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, that's, I feel like nobody ever like learns their lesson, quote unquote, the first time around. We have to have it like, some of us have to have it, you know beaten to us multiple times but we I think you will get there I feel like the most important thing is that you recognize this issue and um you see it that's the most important thing and then being able to apply that like practically in your life is the next step and I have faith in you I feel like you're gonna get there thank you I think so too but definitely like the needing it like drilled in a little bit yeah yeah that's as a recovered alcoholic who went to rehab three times I understand <laughs> no judgment here <laughs> third time to charm yeah you know what? it was for me <laughs> um 
do you believe in God or any form of it? No, I really don't think so. I mean, like sometimes maybe I'm like something might be out there, but like I, my family is Jewish and I went to um, a private school when I was younger, like from first through eighth grade. And so like half of my day was like Judaism studies and, you know, it was like a lot of God stuff. And so it, it was like something that was like big, like in my life and in my family and just like around me. And at some point I was just kind of like, I feel like this is bullshit. Like I just kind of started to like disconnect and then honestly my great grandma got sick I was in like the fifth grade maybe and like at a certain day time like during the day at school like we would have to pray and I remember like praying like please like like make her better and my, it was my great grandma so she was like really old she was 94 and I was like like please like please like don't let her die like let her like get better and then she ended up passing away and I was like God can't be real because like if God was real like that would not happen and I think it like sealed the deal for me like forever um and yeah like I don't really think that there's like the man in the sky hanging out and there's also yeah. like, so much garbage is like happening in the world like I can't I, I can't imagine that like if there was a God that things would be like so terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just don't think, I just don't think so. Yeah, no, I understand. Do you believe in any, do you have like any kind of, do you believe in any kind of cosmic energy or do you consider yourself spiritual in any way? No, no. Okay. Really. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, what do you think is your best characteristic? I'm a good listener. Yeah. That is, rare, that is rare these days. That's good to hear because sometimes it's it's hard to listen to other people, you know, and not just talk about yourself the whole time. I know I struggle with that sometimes. <laughs> like, I'm not a super big talker, so I like to... I do like to listen and I'm definitely like an observer and I'm one of those people where like people upon like first meeting me like tell me like very 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 personal things like I, I don't understand what it is like I still have not like figured out like what about me does it but like people will tell me like very private things mm. like, like we just met like we're standing in line to get coffee like I don't know why you just told me something so serious but um I'm glad that like people feel that they can trust me with stuff I mean yeah, you make people feel comfortable and I mean the fact you just said you're a good listener and you know like I said a lot of people are not good listeners so I think people will gravitate towards that do you find that because you work in the adult industry if you ever meet somebody and they know that you're in the adult industry since you said that people tend to like tell you very personal things do you find that people feel like they can just tell you like their deepest sexual fantasies like you can be a sounding board for that I get that too yeah like all the time <laughs> I'm just like oh. just no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean what's your reaction generally I I just try to be nice <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's great yeah no seriously like in my head it's like okay like I didn't need to know that but I'm just like you know big smile head nodding eye contact and like okay I'll just pretend I didn't hear that <laughs> do you have any if I if I share one of my experiences that I had with that can, do you have one that you can share because I have kind of a funny story about that. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I would love to hear yours. <laughs> okay. I know because you're a good listener. <laughs> so I used to go, 
I don't want to out this person, but it was somebody at, I'll, I'll say this, this is very vague. It was somebody at a gym that I went to and he found out that I worked in the digital industry and he like pulled me aside and he was like, yo, he's like, do you shoot that? Uh, I know you work in porn. He's like, do you shoot that? Uh, do you shoot that fart porn? And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, you know, like, do you shoot that fart porn? And I'm like, no, no, I don't shoot fart porn. And he was like, oh, he's like, he's like, I like that stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. And not to kink shame anybody, but you know, I don't really know this guy. And he's like, but you know, he's like, he's like, I don't like like the wet farts. I like like the dry farts. <laughs> That's so specific. I mean, I, you know, I, I think he need, like felt like it was important that I knew that like he wasn't interested in like, you know, sharding or farting with like, you know, some overspray of diarrhea or something. It was like the dry farts, not the wet farts. It was like, that was in a whole other category. And it was very important that I knew that. <laughs> it's sort of being like, okay. And this is like a trainer that I saw all the time and I would work with sometimes. And I, I just couldn't get that out of my head. And I was like, why did you tell me that? Like, you know, just. Well, was I like, think oh. he was comfortable. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> like, how do you not think of that? Like every single time that you. Uh, <laughs> dude, there's, I'm like, that's the heart porn guy. There he is. Like, that's, you know, and again, like never want to kick shame. If you're into fart porn, that's awesome. But, you know, like maybe. That's not something that you tell somebody who essentially I was like one of his customers, um, one of his clients. It was just like, I don't know. Well, we hope he's doing well. Yes, I hope he is, you know, I hope he's getting farted on all the time. I hope so. <laughs> right. Okay. What is your worst characteristic? Um. I have a temper. I have like I have like anger issues. I'm working on them. I am. I am aware that it is a problem. I'm working on it, but I am very quick to anger and it's the way that it happens, the way I lash out like I, I hate it about myself. I think it's like the worst thing about me because it's like very ugly when it happens and I hate having to like come crawling back around and being like I'm sorry you know with my head down and just like feeling like shit and it's like not okay you know like you can only like lose your shit so many times before like everyone in your life is like I don't want to deal with that shit anymore you yeah know? yeah um, like, I'm, like, trying to work on it in therapy, like, it was, like, interesting, my therapist, like, I was talking to her about, like, I was, like, fighting with someone that's very close to me, and I, like, said a bunch of mean stuff, because, like, in the moment, like, I see red and just, like, lose it, and, mm -hmm. and we were talking about, like, how something can happen, like, on work, like, at work on set, and it's, like, I will keep, I will like do my best to like keep it in. And she was like, well, like, why can you lash out at this person, but you won't let it happen like at work? I'm like, well, you know, like, we'll go tell like other directors, like, oh, don't work with her. You know, she's fucking terrible. She loses her shit. And so it's, she was like, you know, like, there's like a threat of losing something there. Like, whereas like you'll continuously like, lash out at the people close to you like your best friend sister parents whatever because you know when you say sorry they'll come back around there's no threat of like losing anything and mm. I'm oh that actually makes sense <laughs> I was like I was like I hate that you're so um rational right now and that that is actually very true so oh, that's why we that's why we have therapists, right? Because they help us see those things that, you know, we're kind of blind to because we're, it's hard to like see things from that outside perspective. And you're right. We do. We do. We tend to hurt the ones that we love the most. 
like she said it and like I felt like my brain like literally just like opened up and I was like wow okay that was hardcore <laughs> but okay <laughs> but but helpful you think yeah I, I would say that's like what it, like when people say they had like a breakthrough in therapy that was like one of those days and was like oh like wow she just read me to fill <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we pay them <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> what do you think is the most important quality in another person I feel like I was actually talking with my therapist about this question too because I was like I don't know and she was like girl yes you do she's like what do you want people to like give you in relationship she's like you want people to like hear you and like listen to you like the same way that I'm like a good listener I guess I would like that from the other person because I mean we all want to be like heard and understood you know yeah like I think it's like the bare minimum and like when that's like for me personally like when I'm not being heard by another person it's like very very frustrating and like I'm like I feel like I'm standing there like hello I'm right I'm right here I'm like trying to like say this to you and like you know and they like don't get it or like they're glazing over it or just not hearing it yeah I, that makes sense. Do you find that because you're a good listener, do you think that you often end up friends with or dating people who, because you said that you're kind of quiet, like are, are more talkative and, and maybe aren't the good listeners? Yeah, I feel like, but I guess it's like a good balance. Like yeah. I do tend to find like the people that I am around, like do like talk a lot. And not in like a bad way or anything. It's just like, you know, I, I just don't talk too much and they talk a lot. And so like we mm -hmm. even each other out. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Uh, my next question is what makes you happy? This girl right here. Uh, what kind of dog is she? She's a Pomeranian. Uh, she, she really is my best friend. Like, that's my girl like I don't I don't even know like I have like such a special bond with her and I know like people like roll their eyes because she's like a, a dog but like I spend like all my time with her she sleeps in bed with me I take care of her I make sure she's okay you know that's my buddy no I mean dogs are really valuable companions we had a dog that was very special to me he wasn't even my dog he was my parents dog but you know I see my parents a lot so I would see him a lot he was a boxer his name was Milton and he would like hold my hand in his mouth like we were like when we would walk like almost like we were holding hands it was like a weird thing like we were really close and um I don't yeah I don't know I can't explain it like it was this special bond that I've never had with another dog and then he passed away because he ended up getting like his intestines got like twisted, which is actually, I guess, not that common for um, boxers. They like don't live very long. They have problems. And um, and he was trying to tell me that he was sick. And I remember I was shooting for Playboy that day and he was on set and he like kept like trying to jump into the set and jump on the bed. And like he wouldn't leave my side, like more so than normal. And he actually tried to get in my van when I tried to go home, my equipment van. And then he like hid under it. He didn't want me to leave. And I didn't know what was wrong and then I left that I left and then my parents said he was sick and then he died and dude it fucking crushed me like cr I like still have dreams about him this is like eight years ago or something like that that's terrible yeah I loved that dog he was really special so I understand yeah she's my she's my best friend like the whole world this she is my best friend I bring her everywhere like when I want, when I got a dog, I wanted a dog that was small so I could bring her everywhere. Like when I fly, mm -hmm. she comes with me, she's 10 pounds. So she can be in a carrier, like be under the seat. 
take her when I go out to do whatever my hair appointment, go get Botox, <laughs> like whatever it is. <laughs> like she's by myself. So yeah, she, she makes me the happiest ever. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Benny is, at, I just, sometimes I pop into the chat room. Um, so sorry guys, I'm not like paying too much attention to the chat. We are gonna pull a question out of here for Lexi, but I do pop in every once in a while and um, I see what you guys are saying. And um, yes, Benny, this is live. <laughs> and um, Ken says dogs are very special. Oh. And uh, JV Wheels said that he met you twice. And he said that oh, you're the hi. nicest person ever. He is very sweet. Um, and then there's uh, DB Douglas says he's never seen your movies, but you're very nice looking. I have a feeling he's gonna go. He's gonna go check them out maybe after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Hope you> enjoy. <laughs> Next question. Um, what is the one thing that you think people misunderstand about you the most? That I'm shy. Mm. People think that because of my job and specifically because of the types of things that I like to shoot, that I'm very outgoing, but I am cripplingly shy. I have terrible social anxiety. I am so fucking shy and people like don't understand like how it's possible. Like people initially think in their heads that I'm outgoing. And then when I say like, no, I'm actually shy. Like they don't understand. Like the math is not adding up to them. I'm like, well, I like to fuck. I just like, you know, like I can't ask someone in a store like where I could find, you know, the ketchup or whatever. <laughs> But you can do a scene in front of a bunch of strangers. Yeah, like that's that's, that's light work. <laughs> <laughs> How, why do you think that is? Like, tell me the difference. Like, in your head, what's the difference between the two? I mean, I feel confident when I have sex, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I will, like, when I get to set, I am so anxious, like, during, like, the whole paperwork stuff and meeting everybody and, like, being in the makeup chair and then like meeting if it's if I'm meeting the performer for the first time and like that whole beginning stuff I like feel very anxious um and then when it's like okay like camera rolling like everything is just like gone and like I get to bang like finally and it just like it all like washes away it's just so it's like the one area I feel very confident in. That's so interesting. That's really interesting. Funny how that works, right? I was just but, born up. Like that's yeah. Like, that's what it I is. mean. That's that's great. You found you, you found your place. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So last question for me. This is number nine, and the question we're going to take after this is going to be from the audience. What do you think is the biggest misconception about the adult industry? I feel like people forget that we are also human beings. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like, yes, I know you're watching a video and people are having sex, but like, it, it doesn't like, just like stop there. You know, there's like someone, like, I, I, I don't know. Like people just like forget that we are also people. We have like interests outside of performing you know we have feelings so when you like <laughs> comment really mean things like someone is on the other side of that like actually like reading the not nice things that you are saying because you think that we are sex robots uh performing for your pleasure yeah I mean and that's part of the reason that I started this podcast was because I wanted people to see you know because I know you guys as real human beings because we spend, you know, hours on set together and we talk in between shots and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, it was frustrating for me to see people be like, oh, well, she's just a slut or she's just a whore or she's broken or she's a drug addict and all this stuff. I'm like, 
Like, I mean, sure, some people, maybe. But I mean, like, like, yes, we can be all those things, but like, we all are also like dynamic human beings. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's funny. I went and saw my physical therapist this morning, and he was telling me how he was like listening to my podcast, and he was telling me like how he really likes my show specifically because of that. He was like, you know, we have, I had this idea about what porn stars were like. And he's like, and then I listened to your podcast and these are like such interesting people that are like nothing like what I thought. And I was like, yes, that is what we are after. And that's specifically what I, why I do this series, you know, because in my regular podcast, we talk a lot about the industry, but I was like, what if I do something where I like ask them about them as a human being and their fears and their accomplishments and, you know, and I just think that that's, that's so much, you know, that's interesting stuff. I just think it's like so weird. Like, how can you forget that we are people? We are literally human beings. You are seeing the most vulnerable, literal, biological parts of us. We are human beings. You are seeing it with your eyes. Like, how can you not, like, I don't get how people don't grasp that there is like more than our job. Like, if you're an accountant, I'm sure that there is more to you than knowing how to like, do someone's taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think also too, for a lot of people in order to enjoy porn, and I get this in a sense, and I kind of experience this is that like, you kind of almost want to objectify the person that you're watching, right? Because then like, if you're trying to get off on it, um, if you think about them, like as a person, it makes it maybe I'm not putting it correctly but you know what I'm saying like you're there for one thing and you see them as a two-dimensional thing then you can kind of enjoy the experience better right but like that's kind of where you should understand and you leave it but and to carry that on onto social media into other platforms and like attack people for what they do that's when I'm just like okay why are you doing this because like for me you know I can't watch porn because I know everybody in it and like, I can't masturbate to you if we've had like a real conversation and I know you as a human being, like, no, we're done. I was, I was, I was it's like, just oh, weird. And then like, it just feels weird. Something, and it was like a compilation. And like, <laughs> after like the first like couple parts of it, like someone that I know showed up and I was like, oh, get that out of my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching a scene and really be like, and I don't know the girl and they'll be pretty hot and the guy's like heads cut off. And I don't know who it is. And then all of a sudden, like the camera moves and it's like his head pops into frame and it's like Ryan McLean. I'm like, fuck, man. (laughs) No, no, I'm done. He's so nice. He's the nicest guy. And he's being mean in this video, which is like hot for me. But like, he's actually a super nice guy. And I know that in between cuts, he's like asking the girl if she's okay. And if she needs water, I'm like, I'm done. Okay, Lexi, so we've asked our nine questions. We have a few from the audience. Um, Let me see here. Okay. Um, Let's, one second. Okay. We'll do, so Street Maxer asks if you like swing clubs over traditional clubs. But I'm not sure. Do you go to swing clubs, like swinger clubs? I've never okay, been so to then, a club. Period. <laughs> okay. Well, then that's 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 not a good question. <laughs> not not your fault, Street Maxer. But um, clearly, it's not a question that she's really able to answer. So we're gonna go. We'll go to Benny's question. Um, he wants to know if you will ever get married or have kids. Is that in your in your plans? I don't really know. I mean, honestly, I've never even dated anyone before. I just turned 24 and I've never like dated anyone. I've never had a boyfriend or a girlfriend or anything. Wait, didn't you say though that like you put, you've like made decisions yes, that you regretted? Cool, because it was with men I wasn't actually dating. You know, the good oh. uh, situation shit? Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, Lexi, we must work on this. Yes, I I, somehow I get dragged into those fun things. And then I look back and it's been two years and it's like, where did the fucking time go? And why did I waste so much of it? But yeah, I I feel like I 
like it's not out of the question like getting married and children it's not a priority you know like I'm not one of those girls that it's like really like something that like I want and that like I aspire to have I think like if it happens it happens and if not then I have two sisters and a brother like they I'm sure will have children at some point so I'll be a really good aunt <laughs> you know yeah I'll be the cool aunt. My brother just got married a few months ago, so I'm waiting for that to happen. Um, but yeah, it's maybe. a big decision to make, and you are very young. Yeah. Um. So you know you have plenty of time, and I will say I was reflecting the other day on the fact that you know I got married for the first time when I was, I think it was thirty or thirty one, something like that. And I remember I wasn't happy in the marriage and I stayed in it for a while because I thought at the old age of, I think it was like 32 or 33 that like I was way too old to be back at the dating market and I'd never meet someone and it's too late and have kids. I just look back at that now being 44 and I'm like, that was such banana, like that thinking was so asinine. Then we did end up getting divorced and I met my current husband who's amazing. And we had a beautiful daughter um, at, uh, I was 41 when I had her and I had like great pregnancy, like easy delivery. And I'm so glad I waited and like, you know what I mean? Like everything worked out the way that it should. And at 24, I could have never imagined that like I would have ended up where I am now. And, you know, at 24, I wasn't, I was thinking like, oh, I bet. I remember having a plan. I was like, I'm going to meet the right guy at 25. We're going to date for five or for, for four years. Well, no, three years. Wow, my math is bad. Three years and we'll get like married at 28 and I'll have my first kid at 31. And then like I in my head, it was like, this is how my life's going to go. Yeah, like I'm not like that. Like uh, I'm like, you the you I'm be. like, whatever happens will happen. Like I'm not in a rush for anything like and I have no plan <laughs> like I'm just letting shit happen yeah. I mean that and that's how it goes right they say like life's what happens when you're making other plans so I think that in that respect you're you're going about it the right way and you will you will figure it out like I said I mean I think the most important thing is like clearly you have self-awareness and much. that's but that's so important because that's the first step to like you know, basically conquering your demons. So many people don't have self-awareness. So I was just many people. talking about this last night because I did a podcast last night actually. And I was like, I'm too self-aware. Like when, like ignorance is bliss is true. Like if I was ignorant and unaware and just stupid and like had like no idea what was going on, I would be so happy. Like, you know, I, I wish I could just like ignore everything there's there's something to be said for that i get that i get <laughs> that but you're not you're not stupid you're not unself-aware but so now you gotta now you, now you gotta do all the work yeah the, the hard part <laughs> yeah that's okay that's the journey not the destination uh, <laughs> hopefully it'll be worth it i think so well, Lexi, thank you so much for joining us. It was such a pleasure to get to know you. Thank you for having can you me. tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes, you can find me on Twitter, the Lexi Gray. And you can find me on, am I allowed to plug my OnlyFans or no? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. Uh, on OnlyFans, I'm also the Lexi Gray. Fantastic. And your Instagram, you said? It just um, is no longer down. active at the moment. So hopefully you'll get a new one. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe you'll just give up on it, which I wouldn't blame you. I know a lot of people have done that. Yeah. It's exhausting. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Very much a pleasure. Um, you know, if you uh, hit me up uh, in the comments of this message, if you have any other questions that you would like me to ask for future ones, let me know what you think. Of course, if you're just new to my channel, please subscribe, please like. And if you want to get access to exclusive content, live streams of my videos, 
behind the scenes of my shoots, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you all so much for joining us. Lexi, thank you so much for being here. And I will see you all next time. And I will figure out how to turn off Zoom when I find the right window. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Bye.